Good morning, and welcome to worship here at Bethel. My name is Matt Benton. I'm the pastor here at Bethel, and it is my joy to welcome you to worship this day. If this is one of your first times worshiping with us, whether in the sanctuary or online, I want to say a special word of welcome to you. Thanks for stopping by the church on the corner. Here at Bethel, love is our mission. We're about loving God, loving one another, and loving our neighbors. Just a few quick announcements for you today. First off, I want to say a huge thank you uh, to those who came out and participated in the Rise Against Hunger food packaging event yesterday. Um, We had nearly four dozen of us, and we packaged a little over 10,000 meals, despite the fact that we had a small labor dispute about those that went over 10,000. We had one table who said, I signed up for 10,000 and not one meal more but they stuck with us. <laughs> um, so there's a, there's a write-up in your bulletin, but um, since um, we've begun our partnership with Rise Against Hunger, we've been able to provide over 150,000 meals uh, that go around the world uh, and in their, that participate in their mission and God's mission to end global hunger. Um, so that was just phenomenal. Um, if you look closely at that picture, you'll see two Robs. Rob was moving so much that there were two of him yesterday. (laughs) Uh, So thanks again. Thank you to all that came out, and especially to those uh, who organized and led that project for us. Um, If you were here today thinking that there was a worship committee meeting, I have either good news or bad news for you, depending on how you look at it. Um, There's not going to be a worship committee meeting today. We're going to push that back a couple weeks to May 5th. There is going to be a finance meeting today after church. Uh, So if you're a part of the finance team, um, prepare to stay for a little while. Um, That ambiguous (laughs) phrasing covers myself. Um, (laughs) And then uh, lastly, uh, happy anniversary to John and Tammy Adder. Um, Worshiping at home, I'm sure. (laughs) Um, Would you stand as you are able for the call to worship? Turn to Christ. (laughs) Place your trust in God. Lean into the Spirit as we worship in the spirit and truth. Almighty and all-loving God, your grace has called us here. Meet us in this hour with your love and grace that we might live as your people in this world. Through Christ our Lord we pray, amen. Would you join in our opening hymn, Christ is Risen.
Christ and the uh, Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. seated. God is great. All the time. Today's reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, <clears throat> chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. <clears throat> when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by your own power and piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, and the God of our ancestors had glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. Is this we are, in this we are witness? And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent and therefore turn to God so that your sin may be wiped out. Thus ends the reading of the word. Will the children please come forward for a moment with children. Good morning. Hey, bud. So yesterday, we, some of us in this church, did something really cool. May, what did we do yesterday? Rise Against Hunger. And what did we do at Rise Against Hunger? So we packaged meals to go to people that need food. So there are people in this world who get up and go to school, and b but before they go to school, there's no food in their house, so they don't get to have breakfast. If you had to go to school without breakfast, do you think it would be easy to concentrate on school or hard to concentrate on school? Hard, right? Because you'd be concentrating on how hungry you are in your belly? Yeah. That's a, that happens to me, too, if I skip breakfast. First couple hours of work are really tough. And it's really tough for those b little boys and girls just like, just like you who have to go to school and don't have any food in their home. So what the, what the meals we packaged yesterday are going to do is they're going to go, most of the time they go to schools. And the school cooks the meal. And so when the boys and girls go to school, the first thing they do is they get breakfast. And that might be the only meal they get all day. 
but they're going to have a full belly so that they could concentrate on school and learn, and learn things. And we do this partly because we believe that every child should have breakfast before they go to school if they want to or if their parents want them to. Um, it's got to create a little space there for <laughs> you may not want it, but you need to eat it. Uh, but we also do it because God says that when God finally gets everything God wants, nobody will be hungry. Nobody will be without food. That in God's kingdom, when, everything, when God makes everything right, everybody will have enough food. Everybody will have enough to satisfy them. And so we believe that so much that we want to see that happen as soon as possible. So we want to try and do everything we can to have that be true now. And we can't do it all. We can't make everybody in the world have enough food. But we can do what we can. And yesterday we did what we could. And we tried to make sure that um, somewhere in Uganda that there will be children that at least for a while will have enough food they need to start their day. And we do that until we all get to see God make everything right, God make everything okay, and everybody have all the food they need to be happy. Let's have a prayer. Dear God, thank you for your promise that one day you will make everything right, you will make everything okay. Thank you for promising us that one day everyone will have everything they need, all the food they need to be happy. And thank you for letting us work with you to see more of that happen now in our world and in our lives. Help us to follow you and help us to love others the way that you love us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats or out with Miss Patty at Children's Church. And with those of you who are remaining, you have a candy? Oh, that's so cool. Oh, and it's that one? Oh, that looks great. Uh, rise up, O saints of God, and sing with us, Rise Up, O Men of God. you to hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, 
beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Would you pray with me? Almighty and all living God, in calling us to worship you this day, you've already spoken to each one of us. So, Lord, as we turn to your word, read and proclaimed, we simply ask that you continue speaking, and that you give us eyes to see you and ears to hear. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Rachel had just gotten her two sons to school when her phone rang. Her phone lit up with the name of the hotel her husband was staying at while he was on a business trip in Chicago. Rachel wrinkled her face in confusion. Why would her husband call from the hotel phone and not from his cell phone? Maybe he forgot to charge his phone or something. So she swiped to accept the call. It was not her husband on the other line. It was a 20-something hotel employee, and he sounded very, very nervous. For Sam, that day began like any other day. He woke up, had a cup of coffee and scrambled eggs, made a pastrami sandwich for later, and got into his cab to start his day. He'd drive all over the city for the next 12 hours, ferrying people to and fro. He started downtown getting folks to their offices, getting folks from their businesses to to lunch and back to work, and then getting folks home from work. And with the 9 to 5 workday over, Sam headed to the best place to get customers in the evening. Sam headed to O'Hare Airport. Rachel could barely make out what the hotel employee was saying. Every syllable seemed punctuated with an um or an uh. Uh, um, hi ma'am, we have a, um, I guess kind of a, well, a situation here. Your, um, well, your, your husband, he, he was uh, staying with us, and, um, well, sheesh, I don't know how to do this. Um, the, uh, the housekeeping went in this morning to um, clean his, his room, and, well, um, they, they, they found your husband, well, still in bed, and um, they, couldn't, uh, they couldn't wake him. The, uh, the paramedics are here, and my boss is with them, and he asked me to call you. Finally, Rachel said, what are you telling me? Before he got the words out, she knew. Her husband was dead. They needed her to fly to Chicago to identify the body and make arrangements to have it sent back to their home in Seattle. She hung up the phone, and as she began to make arrangements for her to fly out to Chicago and for someone to watch her kids while she was there, she couldn't help but think, my life is over. Jesus' disciples thought their life was over. Good Friday seems like a long time ago for us now, but the last time that the disciples had seen Jesus in Luke's gospel, it was on the cross. They've just gotten this report back from from, uh, people from Emmaus, but honestly, it sounds unbelievable. And it just reminds them of the lowest moment of their lives, when they saw their rabbi, their teacher, their friend, the one who was supposed to save everything, to fix everything, when they saw him die. Sam was waiting in the taxi line when he saw a number of people stream out of the airport doors. A few flights had landed at the same time. He watched as passengers got into the cabs in front of him, and he pulled up to the front of the line. When he was at the front of the line, a woman got into the cab. She gave him the address. He knew that place. It was a morgue. It was where he had gone when his uncle died. His heart sank. Whatever reason this woman had for going to the morgue, he knew it wasn't a good one. Rachel was in a daze the whole flight to Chicago. She was in a daze when she got into the cab. When the cabbie asked where to, she just showed him the email the hotel had sent. She was in a daze when they arrived at the morgue and she got out of the car. She didn't notice that the cabbie had turned the car off. She walked into the morgue and said that she was there to identify her husband's body. She was brought into a cold, nondescript room, and she was told to wait while they went and got him. They wheeled him in on a gurney. Rachel wasn't ready for this. When are you ever ready for this? 
all of a sudden it hit her. She was going to see her husband's lifeless body and she would never see him alive again. He would never hug his sons again. He would never take them fishing again or shoot hoops with them in the driveway again or read a story to them again. He'd never teach them to drive. He'd never make an embarrassing toast at the rehearsal dinner. He'd never stress about paying for college. They pulled the sheet back. As she began to nod and to cry, she felt a hand on her shoulder and someone was handing her a bottle of water. She looked to see who it was. It was her cab driver. I didn't want you to be alone, he said. The disciples have gathered in one place. They are mourning together. They are grieving together. They are trying to figure out what they'll do now that everything has fallen apart. And all of a sudden, there Jesus is. He's standing before them. Peace be with you, my friends. He can tell they are startled. He can tell they don't know what to make of any of this. So he says, why are you frightened and why do you doubt in your heart? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. The disciples are still standing there, mouths agape, unmoving. So Jesus fills the awkward silence. Guys, I'm a bit peckish. Got anything to eat? So they give him some crab dip. Okay. I know the Bible says broiled fish, but crab dip is way better than broiled fish, so can we make this one tiny edit for Jesus' sake? They give him crab dip on a piece of toasted baguette, and he ate that blessed deliciousness. He was there. He was alive. He was real. He was before them. Christ was risen. And he appeared to his disciples in the middle of their pain, in the middle of their grief, in the middle of their confusion, in the middle of their doubt, in the middle of their oblivion. At their lowest moment, there Jesus was. The next day, Sam went to his church small group. He needed to tell someone about his experience. Sam said that he picked up this woman in his cab last night, and from the start, he could tell that the woman was in shock. She didn't speak. She just seemed in a daze. She had the look of someone to whom life was happening. He could tell she was in crisis. When she told him she needed to go to the morgue, he began to pray. He didn't know why this woman needed to go to the morgue, but he knew that he needed to pray for her. So he did. The whole drive, he prayed. And when he got to the morgue, he felt something deep in his gut that told him, stay with her. Don't let her be alone. So when she got out of the cab and walked inside, he put the cab in park, and after she'd gotten inside, he followed. He said he saw a body be wheeled in and figured it was whoever she was here for. He could see that she was gripping, bracing for what would be the worst moment of her life. He said to his small group, I didn't know what to do. She was in so much pain, I just didn't know how to make anything better. I knew I couldn't make anything better. But my heart went out to her, so I just put my hand on her shoulder to try to comfort her. And I gave her the only thing I had in the cab with me. I gave her a bottle of water. Gosh, it was all I could do, and it wasn't much. It was nothing, really, literally nothing, given what she was facing. But all of a sudden, there was this moment that felt full. It was a hand on her shoulder and a bottle of water, and I don't know how to explain it, but it felt like more than that. It really did. I kind of feel guilty saying it like that. kind of makes me sound arrogant. I know what I offered her wasn't much, but it felt like so much more. Back in the upper room, crab dip finished, Jesus begins to teach his disciples. He explains why he had to suffer and die. He explains what his resurrection means. He explains that what died with him was sin and death, and what rose with him was grace and life. He charges them to go and proclaim the forgiveness of sins, call people to repent, to receive grace, go and tell them my story. And then he says, you are witnesses of these things. They have been witnesses of all that Jesus has done for humanity, every act of ministry. They saw him save a host's embarrassment by turning water into wine. They saw him cast out unclean spirits. They saw him feed the hungry. They saw him heal the sick. They saw him raise the dead, 
and they bore witness to what he did to minister to the needs of the whole world. They saw him die for all our sin. They saw him restore all our life. They were witnesses to a life defined by one thing and one thing only, a life defined by ministry. Years later, Rachel walked into her pastor's office. She'd never told anyone the story about the cabbie after she got home. Uh, Once she got home from Chicago, it was a flurry of business with the funeral and the aftermath of settling all her husband's affairs and then trying to figure out how to keep her children's lives as normal as possible. At one point, her pastor had asked her to participate in a church initiative where they would be interviewed regarding their faith story. She really didn't have time for it, and she really didn't want to do it. But her pastor asked her to do it, and she liked her pastor. So she said yes. At least he wasn't asking her to serve on a committee. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) Rachel had honestly forgotten about the appointment until her phone reminded her. It came as an interruption, a demand of time that she didn't really have to give. But she didn't think she could cancel, so she showed up determined to answer the questions quickly and get out of there as soon as she could. It was supposed to take an hour, but she knew that if she tried, she could make it take 25 minutes. She answered all of the interviewer's questions honestly, but quickly. She wasn't trying to dive deep into her life or her feelings or her stories. Just the facts and let's all get on with our lives. The interviewer seemed visibly frustrated with both her brevity and her detachment, but that wasn't her problem. She hadn't asked for this. She was fulfilling an obligation. The interviewer seemed done with her, but then tilted his head a bit and asked one final question. Has there ever been a time when you experienced Jesus ministering to you personally? Rachel froze. And then she decided to let her guard down. She owed it to God, and she owed it to one particular person. She said, I've never told anyone this story before, but yes, there was a time in my life where I experienced Jesus ministering to me personally. It happened after my husband died and I had to unexpectedly fly to Chicago. She told the interviewer her story, how she cried the whole flight, how she was in a daze, how she braced herself in the morgue for the worst moment of her life, and how in that moment she felt a hand on her shoulder and she was given a bottle of water. She looked at the interviewer and said, it was my cabbie, but I swear in that moment it felt like Jesus himself was there with me. That somehow because the cabbie was there, because he stayed, because he was with me, I knew that Jesus was there. I knew that Jesus was with me. I knew that Jesus would never leave me. I didn't know what life would be like without my husband. I didn't know what life would be like being a single mom with two little boys. I didn't know if I could go on or how I was going to go on. I knew nothing. But because the cabbie was there, I knew that Jesus would always be with me no matter what. I knew that Jesus would see me through this pain and grief. I knew that Jesus would always be here. Christ is risen. Christ is alive. And if Christ is alive, that means that Christ is still here ministering to us too. Christ's life continues, and we continue to see Christ through his ongoing and active ministry. We are witnesses of these things. A few weeks ago, our friend Carolyn May was at Sam's Club engaging in ministry for the church. She was buying all the things for our men's group to cook our Easter breakfast. She was putting something in her cart when she slipped and fell. It was a hard fall. She broke her hip and would eventually need surgery uh, and a hospital stay. When I heard what happened, I had two thoughts. What's going to happen to Carolyn and who is going to be with Mike? But here's the thing. By the time I was alerted to any of this, you, Deb, were already in Carolyn's hospital room. And you, Ray, were already at Mike's house sitting with him. And you, George, had already been to their house, already had the shopping list, so that Carolyn's mind could be put at ease, knowing that someone would be shopping for the men. I was all set to get the church wheels moving and be the good pastor who makes sure his people are cared for. But I was too late. The body of Christ had already beat me to the punch. And so I 
got to be a witness of these things. We are constantly, each and every week, witnesses to the ongoing life of Christ in ministry through the body of Christ, his church. Christ is still showing up to minister to his children in acts as simple as the hand on a shoulder, the giving of the water bottle, the delivery of a meal, or the conversation in a hospital room. These actions, though they are small, are full. These moments, though they are fleeting, they're charged. They're more than what they seem. For they are a sharing in and a sharing of the life of Christ. The risen Christ is constantly appearing before us, revealing his presence in our lives and in our world through his continual ministry to his children, to those whom he loves. Not only are we witnesses of these things, sometimes we get to be participants. And then our hearts are full, my friends. Our hearts are full. Thanks be to God. Amen. Would you join us in singing, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. be seated and will the ushers please come forward.
Would you pray with me? Almighty and all living God, we give you thanks for all that you have given us, for the gift of the breath of life, for everything that we have, everything that brings us joy. We give you thanks. Most of all, we thank you for your presence through Jesus Christ, who still comes, ministering to our needs, giving us love and grace, raising us to new life. As we offer these gifts to you, we pray that through the power of your Holy Spirit and the ministries of this church, that your Son might be revealed to all in our community as we continue to minister to the needs of all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Um, I would like, at this time, I would like to call Festus forward. Uh, Festus has um, been attending Bethel for uh, a little while and seeks to come and reaffirm his faith and join the church in membership. So as he joins the church today, uh, Festus wanted to make a public reaffirmation of his faith. Uh, So, brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared in our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. Now, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, please say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, please say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord? in union with the church with which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. If so, please say, I do. I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world? If so, please say, I will. Would you pray with me? Eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you had promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit and by this gift of water, call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you have washed away our sins and you clothe us with righteousness throughout our lives. That dying and rising with Christ, we may share in his final victory. Amen. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Having reaffirmed your faith, and as a member of Christ's universal church, I ask you, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, please say, I will. I will. And as a member of this congregation, 
Will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, please say, I will. I will. Members of the household of God, I commend this person to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. Okay. <laughs> then welcome to Bethel. <laughs> oh, and we have a we have a prayer shawl for you. Um, oop, let me grab that. I won't know what's going on if I don't have my bulletin. Um. I'm, I'm going to leave the, the baptismal font open. Uh, if during our closing hymn, anyone else would like to come forward and remember their baptism, the font will be open for you. Um, but now, as we turn to a time of praying for the needs of the church and the world, we give thanks to the, the very, very, very many of you. Um, seems like this is pretty much everyone in here who is Christ's hands and feet out in the world this week. Who else are we praying for? Would you pray with me? Almighty and all living God, we know that you are here. We know that through the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, your presence is always with us in our church, in our world, in our hearts. We praise you for the ways in which we can see you continuing to move, continuing to work, continuing to minister to us in our lowest moments, in our darkest hours. When we need you most, God, there you are. You share in our joys, and you are with us in the pit of despair. But God, we come here from a week spent living in a world that is still in need of your redeeming, still in need of your healing. We long to see your kingdom come. We long to see your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, we pray for those who are sick, for those who are infirmed, for those who are recovering. We pray that your Holy Spirit would come and bring them healing and would return them to wholeness. God, we pray for the places of our world where we see violent conflict, the number of which seems to be growing, not shrinking. We pray for peace in Ukraine. We pray for peace in Israel and Gaza. We pray for peace in the Middle East. We pray for people in our communities who silently suffer under violence, suffer under conflict. You are a God of peace, and you promise your kingdom will be one of peace. Lord, make it happen soon. We pray this day for those in our community who are food insecure, or housing insecure, or economically insecure. God, we know that in the fullness of time, all will have what they need to thrive. Open our eyes to the needs of your children, that we might respond with compassion, that we might respond with care, that we might respond with love, that we might try to meet meet those needs that we can, God, we know that you are listening. 
you are ever more ready to hear us than we are to pray. And so we commend to you those that we have named in this space, those that are on our church prayer list, requests that have come in through digital means, and those we've kept in the quiet of our hearts. We pray that we might have eyes to see you working, ears to hear of your work. We pray that we might see, and having seen, be able to proclaim, we are witnesses of these things. All this we pray in the name of your Son and our, our Savior, Jesus the Christ, as we pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, in a moment, we'll sing our closing hymn. And again, if you want to come forward and remember your baptism, uh, you can place your hands in the water, um, place the water on your forehead, make the sign of the cross, whichever, w any sign that uh, feels uh, right or comforting to you, um, you are welcome to do so. But our closing hymn is My Lighthouse. Would you stand and sing with us? For those of you who are facing this direction, I am sorry, because those of us who are facing that direction got to see all of Rich's dance moves, and it was fantastic. <laughs> As we go from God's house out into God's world, would you receive these words of benediction? Bear witness to the love of God in this world, so that those to whom love is a stranger will find in you generous friends. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen.